Welcome to Hard Talk, I'm Sean Lay. It's mad, and that's official. Mutually Assured Destruction, MAD, kept the peace when the United States and the Soviet Union confronted one another. But the Soviets are gone, and the nature of the threats that the world is facing has changed. So does nuclear deterrence still make sense? There are ominous signs. North Korea is the new kid on the nuclear block, and China appears to have dropped its promise never to use its weapons first. The British are planning to renew their nuclear submarines, and even Barack Obama is being asked why he's modernizing part of the American arsenal. My guests today have very different views, one committed to disarmament, the other to preserving the status quo. Is nuclear the answer to global insecurity or one of its causes? Douglas Murray and Kate Hudson, welcome to Hard Talk. Douglas Murray, you're Associate Director of the Henry Jackson Society, a society and indeed a man, I suppose, who would admire people like George Shultz and Henry Kissinger, former Republican luminaries. This is what they wrote back in 2007. Most alarmingly, the likelihood that non-state terrorists will get their hands on nuclear weaponry is increasing, and non-state terrorist groups with nuclear weapons are conceptually outside the bounds of a deterrent strategy. It's a changing world with new threats, and nuclear deterrence no longer meets them. Well, I mean, you can come to that conclusion without having to agree with Dr. Kissinger uh, in order to do so. Um, obviously, the combination of uh, nuclear weaponry and uh, terrorist groups is a nightmare scenario. Um, of course, they, they also pose an issue of how on earth you respond to them if you are a nuclear state. Of course they do. But the, to think that that means that nuclear weaponry is obsolete is ludicrous. Uh, terrorist groups, were they to obtain, for instance, from Pakistan, um, such uh, weaponry, would obviously be able to be traced, and the causes and blame for it would obviously be able to be traced to the people who proliferated and ma managed to uh, allow such groups to acquire such weapons. But to think in any case, that, or to make the category error of thinking, that um, there is only one answer to global security issues is a terrible mistake. There are um, state actors and there are non-state actors. There, there are now particularly, there probably always have been. But the fact is, is that to, th to think that you only have one tool with which to respond to any security threat is a mistake. Nuclear is a response to a, a deterrence toward other nuclear states, for instance. But a deterrence against uh, terrorist actors without such weaponry is to have conventional forces, conventional counterterrorism. It's not an either-or situation. Kate Hudson, General Secretary of CND, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. Let me put you what David Cameron, the British mm -hmm. Prime Minister, said recently in defending his uh, commitment to renewing Britain's nuclear deterrent. He said, Soviet Union no longer exists, but the nuclear threat has not gone away. The number of nuclear states has not diminished, and there is a real risk of new nuclear armed states emerging. The threat may have changed, mm -hmm. but it's still there. Yes, he's absolutely right. And I think that's why we have to take major steps to ensure that the threat of nuclear proliferation is diminished and eradicated. The only way we can be certain that we're not going to face nuclear threats in the future is to deal with the problem now and move towards full global multilateral disarmament. Otherwise, we're going to face an increasing number of nuclear weapons states, non-state actors, as Douglas suggests. There will be a widespread or an increasingly widespread access to nuclear weapons, which will end in use either intentionally or accidentally. Hasn't deterrence kept the peace? Well, there have been quite a lot of wars since 1945, so one couldn't say whether it's actually stopped any, but it certainly hasn't kept the peace. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously it's kept the peace during the Cold War. The, the Soviet Union was defeated by, the, uh, Amer by America, Britain, by NATO, without firing a shot. That is how the USSR crumbled. That is how its tyranny over Eastern Europe ended. Now, to think that because you have that standoff, that therefore there will not be any other conflicts is, of course, nonsense. Of course there are other conflicts. There was a Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. There were many, many other conflicts during that period. But, but it is a, a terrible mistake to think that the, the deterrence of MAD, the deterrence of complete annihilation, is not 
a deterrence of some kind. Of course it is. And it stops wars between such actors. You could argue we're in such a situation with, for instance, India-Pakistan. India-Pakistan has an extraordinarily volatile relationship. The fact that they are both nuclear states has to date, although I would not wish that we start from here, has to date managed to stop a full-scale conflagration between those two countries. Let me put to you uh, something on exactly that subject by a former commander of the US Air Force, Global Strike Command, Lieutenant General Frank G. Klotz, writing in March of this year. Scholars disagree on the extent to which the very existence of nuclear weapons on the subcontinent may have lured the prospects for all-out war. Yet the ever-present possibility that some future crisis could escalate out of control regardless of what national leaders might actually intend, the consequences could be horrific. That's not yeah. a uh, a voice from CND. That's a military voice, and he's worried by that. That would suggest that deterrence, whatever it may have done in the past, isn't doing it now. Well, if there's one thing I suspect that we can, for instance, agree on, it would be this. Nobody is in favour of more proliferation. I think both Kate and I would be, and, and indeed she mentioned it, in favour of non-proliferation. We don't want, nobody wants any more countries to become nuclear. Ideally, the number of countries that are currently nuclear would not be nuclear. But to think that the solution to current global instability, at the very moment that countries like North Korea and Iran are seeking and acquiring nuclear weaponry, is for countries like the UK and the US to, uh, to dismantle their nuclear weaponry, is madness. Kate, it's a madness to propose it and there's no blueprint for doing it. There isn't a blueprint. I think we have to look at this very much in the global context. I was at the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty Conference in Geneva and that reminded me just in what a small minority Britain is in continuing to be a nuclear weapons state. There are around about 180 countries there, the majority, the vast majority of which do not have nuclear weapons for their security. Many of them, in, I think the whole of the Southern Hemisphere is actually organized in various different nuclear weapons free zones. All these countries believe that nuclear weapons are not necessary to their security and in fact to continue with nuclear weapons is a grave disservice to humanity. I mean, There's an increasing global dialogue about this where the majority of states are objecting to the fact that a very small number actually threaten their livelihoods, the continuation of their lives, in fact, and the human race as a whole. And that, that's the reality of the situation. Well, Brit Britain doesn't threaten the livelihoods of people around the world because we've got Trident. That's just a well, silly the, overstatement. The conti no, but, but I think you should is, conduct your remarks in a polite fashion. The fact that we are in a situation where a minority of states have nuclear weapons is, of course, the fact. The, the, the case. It's and they are all obliged under the Nuclear the, Non-Proliferation Treaty to undertake of steps in good faith towards disarmament of and us agreeing to replace Trident so we are a nuclear armed state for the next 50 odd years is not a good faith step towards the disarmament. Of the minority of states in the world today that have nuclear weaponry is a good thing. We want as few countries as possible to have nuclear weaponry. Yeah, the less the better. Absolutely. We're With in agreement zero, on We're in agreement on that. We're on agreement. Goal. We're on agreement that we want the, the, the fewer is better. However, I do not think None it's a wise best. situation. None would be wonderful. It would be wonderful if this Pandora had never, Pandora's box had never opened, but it opened. And the question now for the future is, do we have countries like North Korea, rogue regimes, able to break out very swiftly as they can, as Iran may well be able to in the future? Do we want to live in a world where that happens and other countries like this one, like the US, has no response for that? Or do we want to live in a world where with a none. few countries no. like we this are able to have, no are able to have power? Uh, and we, we've if established the North Koreans that and the British are both proliferating, interesting we're raised, going to end up with more countries. You raised that question, but exactly that yeah. point, I'm very interested by Kate Hudson because you said in your remarks earlier that um, many of the countries don't want nuclear weapons and they don't want their neighbours to have them. Yeah. The problem is their neighbours do have them. Yeah. Uh, two surveys are conducted just after the third nuclear test by North Korea, one by Gallup Korea, the other by the Asian Institute for Policy Studies of South Koreans, that yeah. found that 64 to 66 and a half percent between supported South Korea developing its own nuclear weapons. New York Times spoke to a Mr. Kwon, an engineer mm -hmm. uh, in South Korea, who said, having a nuclear North Korea is like facing a person holding a gun with just your bare hands. Mm -hmm. South Koreans should have our own nuclear capabilities, not least in case the US pulls out as it did over mm -hmm. Vietnam. In other words, in the kind of uncertainty we have at the moment, mm -hmm. they want to go nuclear. And being members of a non-proliferation treaty makes no difference to them. Well, they'd have to pull out like North Korea did. But it's happened. Well, yeah, North 
career was a member of the NPT and in the early 2000s when George Bush said it was uh, on the axis of evil, it left the NPT and said it had a deterrent need to develop nuclear weapons for its own security. Exactly the same argument about security and nuclear weapons possession as we and the other mm. nuclear weapons states but perpetuate. Would you, recognize, would you recognize, can I ask, any moral difference though between, for instance, United Kingdom and North Korea? I think that any country having nuclear weapons is uh, unacceptable. We are obliged but under international law... Do you think there's law. a difference between North Korea and Great Britain, for instance? There are many differences, but on the question of nuclear possession, I think it is wrong in both cases. You think and it's we equally have, wrong we or more to, wrong? I think equally wrong for really? any country to have nuclear weapons. And you, I'm sure, are aware of so history, and you know that the only country which has ever used nuclear weapons is the United States, and it used them against a country that did not have a so-called nuclear deterrent. In, in so we cannot... To, in order we to cannot and close World War II, yes. Yeah. And we already know from the testimony of many senior politicians and military people that Japan was already no, attempting to... That's CND's to version of surrender. history. No, you that's keep on, you keep on saying this, but just you should hear what people like Winston Churchill had to no. say just about this. It's CND's version of history. Just on this question well, it's of... It's a jolly good one because it's an accurate one. I'm afraid that's not question. Winston Churchill. <laughs> it wasn't Winston Churchill. Just on the question. It's, it it's CND's version. Let's not argue yeah. about the past too much. I'm quite keen to talk about the present and the future. Good idea, good idea. Just on the present, uh, Douglas Murray, you, we talked a bit about North Korea and why North Korea might be motivated. Is there a danger that actually the system we have at the moment, uh, rather than deterring, is actually perversely encouraging uh, proliferation? Uh, and I, I give the example of North Korea because you wrote an article about three years ago in which you, you specifically said uh, there's this desire among rogue states and states that want to prove themselves on the international stage to join the big boys club, as you put it. North Korea, by aping the nuclear powers, its leaders believe they can bypass all those tedious interim stages of getting a functioning economy or food and water for citizens and go straight to the top table by virtue of its nuclear arsenal. This temptation will exist as long as nuclear weaponry exists. I mean, in a sense, it becomes a self-perpetuating thing. Right. Isn't course, that in yeah. itself a yeah. case for getting yeah. rid of them? No, I, I, it's a case for ma making sure that countries like North Korea never have nuclear weaponry. It is a case for, for, for saying that... that so where, where would that take you? It would mean that you did everything you could to stop countries like Iran, North Korea becoming nuclear countries. So who countries. else would you accept as a nuclear country? I wouldn't want any other country to become a nuclear right. country. So it's but a just, closed club. It's a closed club. But just, on, so those, should be. But just on those two countries, we don't know what Iran's uh, state of Iran's nuclear ambitions are. Well, they, we, they, say, they say they're only interested in nuclear energy. Other countries say mm. they want to acquire a weapon. Uh, but are you saying if we, if we get to that stage, and we are at that stage with, it is alleged, although the accuracy is questioned of, of North Korea's weapons program, there is a moral obligation on other states to eliminate those weapons? Yes, there's a moral and a strategic obligation. So bomb them. Do, so. do anything you can. Do everything and anything you can to stop countries like Iran joining the nuclear club. Including so bombing, bombing yes, those including sites. bombing. Um, there's a very interesting lesson to be learned f from North Korea. Why, why is, I mean, I, I don't agree with the version of history of the last 10 years that was just given about North Korea, but why, for instance, if you were, if you were um, the regime in Pyongyang, why would you not seek to acquire them at the moment? You saw, and I think this is, a, this is an important point to make, you saw Colonel Gaddafi, for instance, volunteer up his nuclear program to President Bush and Prime Minister Blair um, after the uh, invasion of Iraq. You saw Gaddafi do that. So you can get back into the Pandora now, box. But subsequently, ah, 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 gave, but but gave them up as well. Were, and yeah, another, there, there are, there are some Texas cases states. of nascent nuclear programs, such as Libya. This is more advanced than some people thought, but certainly South nowhere near. But had could I just finish my point? It? it was much, uh, much further advanced than most people thought. Gaddafi subsequently gave them up. But some years later, when he then started brutalizing his people again and so on, there was an international intervention, and I think a correct one. However, if you were the regime in Pyongyang, you would probably notice that NATO was able to go and intervene in Gaddafi's Libya when it was not nuclear, but very, very much fears intervening in countries where they are nuclear. So I think, yes, the international community gives off a very bad signal. It gives off the signal that if you are able to nuke up fast, you could remain in power forever. That's hey, right. Hudson. This is it's the same argument that we have. We need them for our national security and we're not prepared to give them up. I think what I'd be interested in hearing uh, from Douglas about is given that we are as a country signed up to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, our own government and former governments are very committed to that multilateral disarmament goal, uh, to Article 6 of the NPT about uh, 
progress towards disarmament. Um, how would you propose that we do take steps towards nuclear disarmament? I, I don't propose, that, well, I take, suggest that we take steps to minimize the number of nuclear warheads uh, worldwide, which, which we're, we're committed to. But, I mean, to think that that leads to the complete annihilation of our nuclear capability is, is nonsensical. Well, that, that's it, it in really, the treaty really, we're signed no, up it's, to it's, that. It's, 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 we, are, we, are, we should not, at any stage, be thinking of, uh, of, of disarming ourselves, of America disarming itself of nuclear weaponry, when we have seen in recent months, when we can, we'll see in the months ahead, that rogue regimes are able to acquire these weapons. It is madness you're to do so. You're in a very so. small minority, and, in your well, opinion. You're in a very that. small minority, no, in your no, opinion. No, That's no. why in, CND no, can't in, find in the funding Britain, it wants. You obviously um, haven't read opinion the, polls over the last several years, which show the majority of the population is in favour of scrapping Trident no. and cancelling the replacement. Globally, no. obviously, it, it's it is, massively it is, it, it, in favour of look, nuclear uh, first, first of all, I don't think you're you, on a losing ticket look, now. I, you may I, have been in the majority decades ago, but you're in a minority ticket for decades. We Look, may have been in a minority can't in the past, hear it when you're both speaking but now, at once. Just Look, finish your point. But, but now you're... we're in the majority, okay. and that's shown by opinion polls in Britain and around okay. the world. The campaign for nuclear disarmament has lost its lost for decades. Of course it has. Its argument hasn't been listened to, and nor should it be. But is we're it but, things now. changing? But, but, yeah, but changing. Look, no, the, no, the, question, the debate changing no, the, because course, the threats are changing. Of course, the debate's always changing, and so it should. Uh, and it doesn't matter, by the way, whether I'm in a minority or not. I don't particularly care whether it's a minority opinion or not. You it's know, whether or not the, it's the, the case or not. Can I just finish my case? Well, no, can I just finish my point? We're allowed just, to talk I know, over I know you keep talking over me, and your points <laughs> aren't. I think you're both doing very well at it. Your, my points aren't your worth, points hearing, aren't worth the intervention <laughs> in most cases. Um, but, but the point that's, that, that, that's worth, worth, worth reiterating on this is that, of course, we, um, as I say, we're all for non proliferation. I don't think any of us want more nuclear weaponry in the but world. It's not I would like is it? to the see. Not if working. I can finish, I would working. like to see Britain able to retain a nuclear deterrent. I would like to see the United States retain a nuclear deterrent. I do wish that Pakistan and India, for instance, did not have a nuclear deterrent, but we are where we are. Whatever, um, whatever position you come from, however, it is a madness to think that we and Pyongyang, for instance, are on a moral well, equilibrium. Just uh, because we sort of touched on that already, but just on that very specific point about we are where we are, do we have to be, Kate Hudson, where we are? Are there incentives, are there mechanisms, given that non-proliferation treaties, for all its virtues as you see them, hasn't stopped countries mm. since the uh, treaty was established in 1970, acquiring nuclear weapons, acquiring nuclear status, whether by leaving the NPT or never joining it in the first place. Are there incentives that could actually persuade some countries to leave? Is there a mechanism that would help people to say, we want to relinquish our nuclear weapons? Well, we have seen a number of countries actually give up nuclear arsenals. South, uh, South Africa, for example, had an arsenal which it gave up um, after the apartheid regime. We saw a number of successor states from the Soviet Union also give up their nuclear weapons. Many countries around the world with sort of borderline capacity, with a technological capacity, uh, chose not to do that. Um, and I think that in terms of moving forward globally, there's a very strong recognition that something else would be better. In terms of Britain, what would be better? If you're looking at uh, how we spend our money on defence, for example, the opportunity cost uh, in defence terms of maintaining Trident is absolutely massive. And there was a, an op-ed in the New York Times last week where a senior US official was quoted as saying, Britain can either have Trident, this was in terms of NATO and some military capacity, uh, Britain can either have uh, Trident, it can be a nuclear weapon state, or it can be a useful military partner. In other words, if we have Trident, we're a nuclear weapons state, but if we don't have Trident, we can actually have a whole range of other kit. We can have restore some of the troops that we've already lost because of the defence cuts. We can have all kinds of other useful things, which is one of the reasons why a number of senior military figures say we should scrap Trident, that it's militarily useless, and we should actually spend it on useful de defence capacity. And in the go this government's own national security strategy a couple of years ago, they actually downgraded the, the threat of state-on-state -state nuclear warfare to a tier two threat. Level one threats, things like cyber warfare, terrorism, pandemics, climate change, just, real things we need to address. Just on that question then, Douglas Murray, I mean, it, do you find it perverse that uh, the British government would spend, what, 20, 25 billion on renewing a weapon it has no intention of using, it would regard as a failure of mm. diplomatic and military strategy if it ever had to use it? Uh, but at the same time can't find the money for an army that's any bigger than it was 
when Napoleon was the biggest threat that Britain faced? No, I mean, this is like talking about the NHS in terms of, you know, should the NHS cure cancer or should we have hospitals? Should the NHS tackle diabetes or should we deal with another disease? You deal with the problems you have in front of you. But are, is this and, the right way of dealing and, with yeah, them? That's you, the point. You, you, deal with you, 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 deal, you deal with you, you, you can, just as surely as, as, as you, can, you can make sure that funding for other parts of the state is suitable. But we've already you can make had sure that funding, you can make sure that funding. Yes, and we've I think that was very unwise. Yeah. I, I, personally, but the money I think isn't there for all the big If I could just finish projects. another point. Um, it, personally, I think it's perfectly obvious that you can have a nuclear deterrent and you can also have conventional forces. In the world we live in today, we need both a nuclear deterrent for nuclear armed states and to deter them, and we also need conventional forces. Of well, course, that's, that's people. Wishful of course, thinking, Douglas. Well, 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 the money is there. Come on, there. you've been doing decades of wishful thinking. The you can't criticise me for it now. <laughs> Uh, the money's not I there, is it? The, um, look, <laughs> the, the, the money is the money. <laughs> the money. Um, look, <laughs> sorry, that was an opening. Come on, um, look, look. It, you, it's not an either or. Now, it's not an either or. It should it's, be a gentleman. Not an either, it's not an either or decision. Of course, people and, in the senior members of the military are always going to be aggravated, and they are aggravated when they see this amount of money on Trident, and they see their own troops being cut, when they see mm. terrible pay for the armed forces. When they see people being sent off to Afghanistan on very, very low pay, of course military leaders are aggravated by that. But to think that you aren't going to need all of these tools in the toolbox to respond to the problems of the 21st century is ludicrous. Let Where would you, you cut the money from to pay for all of that? Oh, all sorts of places. Let's look ahead then. Twenty years from now, what will the state of the world's nuclear arsenal look like? What, if anything, will be different? as a result of the debate that's taking place internationally now. By what date, did you say? 20 years 20 ahead. Years I would uh, like to think, well, a, an optimistic forecast would be that we would be in the final stages of full global eradication. I think what is uh, possible, if not uh, very possible, is that we'll see increased bilateral reductions between the United States and Russia, which they're both committed to, when they get down to a certain level, I think it's also very possible, and this has been mooted in international circles, that the other nuclear weapon states will then, then come to the table and talk about reducing together. Uh, I think that's very, very possible. I think in terms of uh, putative nuclear weapon states and, p and states with nuclear ambitions, I think that at that point they can also be drawn into the discussion. I would like to see a situation in which um, countries like the US, USSR, scaled down the number of warheads they had. Russia, I would don't like live to in the see, past. I would like to see a situation in which, in the, which this country retained its nuclear deterrent. I would like to see a situation where nobody else joined the nuclear club, where uh, Iran was not a nuclear power, where Pyongyang was not a nuclear power. I'd like to see a situation where no more countries break out. However, 20 years from now, if those who believe that the onus is entirely on us have their way, then we'll live in a world in which the worst regimes have the worst weapons and the best regimes have none. An intriguing final question to you, Kate. Um, nuclear weapons are a terrible thing. Mm. Uh, from your point of view, they are an unacceptable thing. Yeah. Does that mean there is a moral obligation to eliminate them and, if necessary, prevent countries getting them? Uh, going so far as actually bombing weapons sites? I'm, I don't believe that bombing is the way to resolve what are very often the result of complex regional problems. We've talked about proliferation. Is prevention better than treating the after effects? I think that we have to prevent nuclear proliferation in an through the peaceful dialogue process. I think that we have to also be aware that steps that we take ourselves will have consequences. And if we decide to replace Trident now, we will be contributing to global proliferation. I can assure you, Pyongyang, it Pyongyang it is not be, looking to London oh, for they moral are, lessons. They They're are. not looking to London for moral and lessons. And that is the last word on nuclear deterrence on Hard Talk for now. Kate Hudson, Douglas Murray, thank, thank you both very much Thanks for joining you. us. Pleasure.